We are going to play a bowling game today. In order to play, we need a game board, we need a dice, and we need something to write with. To start with, we're going to roll our number cube three times and record our results below. From there, we're going to take those three numbers and in any combination possible, try to come up with the solutions one through ten. So that means whatever three numbers we have, we could automatically cross those off. To come up with the other values, we could do things like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, using order of operations, squares, square roots, factorials, or really any operation that we know to come up with all 10 values. The team that makes a strike by coming up with all 10 values or comes closest to making a strike is going to be the winners. Let's see how this works. Let's start by rolling our dice three times. On our first roll, we got a four, we got a three, and we got a five. So we're going to record those results here in our box. We got a 3, a 4, and a 5. Now we're going to take our 3, 4, and 5 and use them to come up with the values 1 through 10. Well, we can start by crossing off our 3, our 4, and our 5. 3 equals 3, 4 equals 4, 5 equals 5, so there's three pins we have down right away. We're going to kind of go sequentially through 1 through 10, but you can really go in any order. For 1, we're going to start by subtracting. 4 minus 3 gives me 1, so we can knock down that pin. Same thing for 2. I can do 5 minus 3. That's going to give me 2, so I can knock down that pin. Now skipping down to 6, 6 gets a little trickier because there really isn't a combination we could add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So we're going to use factorials. We're going to find 3 factorial to give us 6. 3 factorial means I can do 3 times 2 times 1. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 1 is 6. So there's my 6, and we can knock down that pin. For 7, we can go back to addition. There's 3 plus 4, and that gives me 7, so I can knock down that pin. Same thing for 8. I can go back to addition and do 5 plus 3. That gives me 8, knock down that pin. And for 9, I can do 5 plus 4 and knock down that pin. Now for 10, we know if we do 5 plus 3, that's going to give me 8, but I only need 2 more to get to 10. This means I'm going to work in a square root. I'm going to take the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2, so that means I have 5 plus 3 plus 2 that gives me 10. That knock downs that pin and gives me my strike. Now this isn't the only combination of operations that everybody could use to get 1 through 10. Different teams might come up with different combinations. For example, instead of crossing off 3, instead we could use more of our square roots and add together square root of 5 plus 4. 5 plus 4 gives us 9, and then we take the square root of 9, so that gives us 3. So that's another way we could have come up with 3. For 4, we could have used a little order of operations and some negatives. To start with, I could have done 3 minus 4, and then added that to 5. 3 minus 4 gives me negative 1, and then when I add that to 5, that's going to take me back to 4. I also could have used some squares. So for example, on 7, instead of adding 3 plus 4, I could have done 4 squared minus 3 squared. Well, 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 16 minus 9 also gives me 7. It doesn't matter what combination you use to come up with these sums, the goal is to make that strike or knock down as many pins as possible. Check out the other videos in our playlist and don't forget to click on subscribe. Thanks for watching!